Augmented target docking adapter number 02186 was launched on June 1, 1966 at 3 p.m. UTC from Cape Canaveral. It was a backup device to be used for Gemini docking tests if an Agena target vehicle failed, and the one that Gemini 9 was supposed to dock with did fail on May 17th. The ATDA had no main engine and propulsion unit, unlike the Agena, and was therefore quicker to prepare as a backup to avoid delays in the crewed missions. It was also much lighter than the Agena, coming in at just 794 kilograms, which was necessary because the Atlas rocket had to loft into orbit without an upper stage. In fact, the Atlas had to burn a little bit longer to get the ATDA to its intended circular orbit at 300 kilometers, and in an experimental maneuver, it kept burning its verniers after the sustainer engine shut down to refine the orbit. This was the only time this docking target was launched, and it reached orbit successfully to await the arrival of Gemini 9A, the A added to the mission name because of the change in plans after the original Agena target blew up. Gemini 9A was launched on June 3rd at 1.39pm UTC from Launch Complex 19 at Cape Canaveral. It carried astronauts Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan, who were originally the backup crew, but were bumped up after the deaths of the prime crew, Elliot C. and Charles Bassett, in a T-38 crash three months earlier due to poor conditions at Lambert Field. Stafford and Cernan were to dock with the ATDA, and then Cernan had a long list of spacewalk activities planned, with an EVA that consisted of performing tasks originally meant to be handled on Gemini 8 before it concluded early thanks to the thruster malfunction. Cernan was supposed to test the AMU, Astronaut Maneuvering Unit, which was an early version of the MMU, Manned Maneuvering Unit, used on some space shuttle missions. It was essentially a thruster pack that would allow the astronaut to maneuver free from the spacecraft. The AMU had three times the delta V as the MMU because it used hydrogen peroxide thrusters. When the crew approached the ATDA, however, they saw that the docking would be problematic because the fairing around the docking port had not separated cleanly. The idea of using the Gemini's nose to knock away the jaws of the angry alligator, as Stafford described the fairing, was rejected by ground control. That part of the mission already a failure, the EVA didn't go any better. In contrast to the Kerbal in the video, Cernan couldn't even reach the AMU, much less test it. He found the spacesuit stiff and required a lot of effort to do basic movements, quickly tiring. During an EVA lasting two hours, ground control was concerned that he would pass out. His heartbeat went up to 180 beats per minute and he was sweating profusely. Stafford eventually decided they had to cut short the EVA and ordered Cernan back in. After the issues on Gemini 8, this mission was a huge setback, basically right from the start with the failure of the Agena, but everything seemed to go wrong. The AMU had been an Air Force project, and to their frustration, it would never be tested. The EVA issues were the most vexing, as this was only the second US EVA, and Ed White's initial effort had given no sign of the issues Cernan encountered. Could humans work in space? NASA would have to figure out a way before moving on to the Apollo program. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Gemini 9A.